Sox Blue Jays game two and the Sox try to get back the game they lost last night a wild card race Toronto hitting five solo home runs to take game one of a big weekend series. Hi everybody Dave O'Brien alongside Red Sox Hall of Famers Tim Wakefield and Kevin Euclid and also Tom Karen in just a moment and guys a big weekend for the Red Sox bullpen maybe the most important all season 12 of the last 40 games the Red Sox you could used an opener. Yeah, the opener has been something new to a lot of Boston Red Sox fans. But I'll tell you what, this bullpen has been really good all year. The starting pitching has come around and done a good job. But here in the dog days of the summer in August, you got to look out for those innings pitched. 465, which is third in all of baseball. Don't know what's going to be in store for these guys. You just got to keep them healthy as much as you can. And hopefully they can hold on to the rest of the season. Yeah, and they've used an over 21 times this year, Uke, and it's the fourth most in Major League Baseball. Listen, we need to get Chris Sale and Tanner Houck healthy to get back in the rotation to take a lot of pressure off this bullpen. They can't continue to do this for the next two months. Need Garrett Whitlock back in that bullpen as well. Speaking of guys getting back in there, very good news for the Red Sox here today. Justin Turner returns. He has missed the last three games because of that heel injury. He's the DH. He's batting third. He's been missed. Red Sox and the Jays to tangle on a Saturday afternoon at Fenway. Your workplace break room at Hoopot WB Mason by Berkshire Bank, where you bank matters. Sullivan Tire and Auto Service, we're always here to get you there. And by buyatoyota.com, offers not seen on TV. Visit buyatoyota.com. Now to TC for the homestand report from the Ford Clubhouse at Fenway Park. The Red Sox have had to schedule a lot of bullpen games because of injuries to pitchers, and that includes each of the next two against the Blue Jays. There is help on the horizon, however, as the Red Sox have Tanner Houck starting tonight in Worcester and Chris Sale going tomorrow for the Blue Sox. The hope is his next start could be with Boston. Here at Fenway today, another big step forward. This one for Garrett Whitlock. Two full innings of live BP, and he got back out there for one more batter in the third. Alex Alex Cora said the velocity was good. The shape of his pitches was also good. And pitching coach Dave Bush said overall they were happy with the day. Uh, Garrett looked great. Um, got up uh, a third inning out there and, and really just trying to build up his workload and make sure physically he felt good. Um, that the fastball's coming out well and also the shape of the break balls and, uh, and the changeup is what he wanted. Everything go as you'd hoped, as he'd hoped today? Yeah, everything was great. Um, I, I felt good about watching him. I think he felt good physically. That's probably the biggest concern now is just making sure that, that when he's out there on the mound, he feels normal and like he can pitch the way he wants to, and I saw that today. Today it'll be John Schreiber, the opener. Chris Murphy expected to be at least part of the bullpen mix coming in as a bulk guy. Nick Pavetta also a possibility for today or tomorrow. We'll see how it all plays out. We know this much. It is a gorgeous day for baseball here at Fenway Park in Boston. Game two between the Red Sox and Blue Jays first pitch next on Nesson. Sent. WB Mason, refresh your workplace break room with Who But WB Mason and by Plymouth Rock, the official auto and home insurance provider of the Boston Red Sox. Well, as TC mentioned, a glorious day for baseball. Game number two, Red Sox dropping last night amidst a slew of home runs by Toronto. And today going with the opener and John Schreiber who comes in one and one, making his second career start, coming off a rough outing out of the bullpen the other day. In Seattle, look at the Blue Jay lineup he'll take on. It's brought to you by Nissan with Merrifield. Look out. He went after the first pitch and hit one out last night. Brandon Belt's the DH. Vladdy Guerrero also homered yesterday's at first. Springer in right. Alejandro Kirk does the catching. It'll be Chapman at third base, Barsha in center, Schneider at second base. He hit a home run last night in his major league debut. First at bat, and the young is it short? Hence the Red Sox starter brought to you by buyatoyota.com. Schreiber came out of the pen against Seattle on Wednesday and gave up four runs. Let's take a look at the Red Sox defense. We got Devers at third base, Chang at short, Urias at second, Casas at first, Yoshida in left, Duran in center, Duvall in right, and the battery. Schreiber as the opener, Wong as the catcher. Umpires brought to you by buyatoyota.com. Bill Miller has home plate. It'll be Whitson, Ortiz, and Drake around the bases. 
We're available as telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your TV remote SAP brought to you by Toyota certified used vehicles and the weather presented by Window World of Boston the official replacement windows of the Boston Red Sox just perfect today. Lots of sunshine and 81 degrees at the moment. Not much of a breeze. Toronto winning last night for the first time all season. They're now one and seven against the Red Sox. And also gaining a full game on Boston in the wild card race. So up by three over the Sox at the moment. Baseball today the Yankees knocked off Houston three to one. So the Sox have to win the ball game today to stay out of the basement. We having another delay today with the umpires. Schneider was just talking to Bill Miller for some reason. Just waiting for the bullpen to get off the field. Yeah, they tend to take forever. They do this all the time. No. <laughs> Toronto does. Starters. Those starters. So now we're just about ready to go. Last night it was a base that was misaligned at first. They had to redo that. Merrifield in. And in the sunshine at Fenway, here we go. He swings at the first one again, but pops this one foul after the home run last night. After yesterday, I'm not surprised he swung at that first pitch. They hit five wow. solos in the game. That was a season high in home runs for Toronto. It's also a season high allowed by the Red Sox, the five. And a breaking ball in there to make it on two. It's going to be a tough day after this first inning for the hitters. The shadows are creeping. This to be my favorite days to pitch, you. That's you two guys in a nutshell. You immediately talks about how how much difficult it's going to be to hit. <laughs> you know, in 20 minutes, you're talking about how much you love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the pitcher position player situation, right? Definitely. We love each other, but we hate each other at the same time. That's right. One two pitch got jam there and he flicked it foul but wakes different because he got drafted as a position player and moved into the pitching. Role. So we somewhat like wake <laughs> I have some experience <laughs> playing the infield <laughs> not as much as you did but you had to look forward you to. Tim Wakefield starts. I always did. <laughs> the best. You knew they were going to be over fast. The other starters definitely did not average time limits like Wake did. Wake could pitch today. Some of the other ones, they had a lot of violations. I was laughing because every time I there was a ground ball hit to the right side <laughs> of the infield, I was yelling at you, don't let me run all the way over there and not flip me the ball. I'm old. One two to Murrayfield. He spoils that one. There had to be a lot of times you when Wake was on the mound where a guy would take a swing at one of his pitches and you were laughing. Oh belly laughing like crazy belly laughing. I used to I was always like thank goodness he's on my team. I do not want to face that. That's in there strike three. He punches out Merrifield to get it underway one gone. This is painted right here. He's trying to go inside, but this will work too. On the back end, little sinker stays true. That was filthy. <laughs> Sends up the DH Brandon Belt. 246, nine home runs. Boy, they are aggressive, aren't they? I mean, up and down the lineup, it's not just a couple of guys. Everybody, for some reason. Yeah, the analytics kind of say with that first pitch that you should go after it, but I would say, well, what if I, what if I pop it up? Then the analytics stink. He bunts, pops it up. Oh, oh no. no, that's a fair ball too. Kicked into foul ground, but that's fair, and he reaches with one out first inning. Yeah, the difference between football and baseball is you don't have to keep both feet in bounds. <laughs> It looked like he was trying to stay. It looked like he was trying to reason. stay in fair. Watch, watch this. Go to two hands. Oh, that's where I always say, go to that one hand. Every time you try to go to two hands, getting that out there, bad things happen. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. It's kind of in between. You can't get over there fast enough to actually put your glove above your head and catch a pop up. It's almost like a basket catch. And when you're on the run as a pitcher, you don't usually get those too many times. So it'll be an E1. Laddie with a high fly ball to center, but coming in a couple of steps to Rand to make the catch. Another guy just loves that first pitch. And two down. So Schreiber looking to pitch around his own error brings up George Springer 246 13 home runs. Yeah, wind's going a little bit out to left field right now so. Last night too it was blown out. In there strike one. With the sinker. Alejandro Kirk doing the catching. He's a late addition. Red Sox also had Alex Verdugo in the original lineup. He was a late scratch. Alex Cora says that is not an injury. Belt the base runner with two down. Detroit beat Tampa Bay four to two. That's hit the other way for a single. Bell will take off rounding second. He will truck on into third and stop there. Springer with a base hit to keep the inning alive and get it to Kirk here. The runners at first and third. Just a good piece of hitting right there from George Springer. Getting that sinker away off the dish and just going with it. Those are the swings you love as a hitter. You try to practice that over and over, getting that outside pitch, staying on top of it, not collapsing on the backside. That's some great plate coverage right there. The ball was at least six inches off the plate. We saw a couple of those last night as well. Guys covering balls off the dish. Kirk at 256, but he's a very hot stick coming in. His last 11 games, he's hitting 405. He's got belted third and Springer on at first. You're going to hear from the Toronto fans again today because there's so many. They bought their tickets for the weekend. And they are here in force, as we mentioned last night. Yeah, they knew exactly what dugout to be behind, too, because there is a lot behind that third base dugout in blue. Schreiber trying to get out of this and deals too high with a fastball. Red Sox already have an active bullpen. One, two, a high fly toward the pesky pole. Duvall moving back on the track. He has room to make the catch and retire the side. Two left. The Red Hot Jaron Duran followed by Yoshida, Justin Turner, and Rafi Devers. Duvall is in right with Casas at first. Urias at second base, Wong catching. Chang, who hit a home run last night, is at short. Taking on Blue Jays starting pitcher, brought to you by PNC Bank, having to make banking easier. Jose Barrios, 8 and 7, 331 ERA, allowed one run in six innings last time out. A 3 2 loss by the Blue Jays to the Angels, but he had no decision. He's throwing the ball very well coming in. Yeah, he had a great month of July. Six earned runs, five starts. So, had a little struggles out the gate, and now has looked like he has regained his composure. Blue Jays have a really good pitching staff, really strong rotation. Toronto third in the American League overall in ERA with a pitching staff at 382. So, you will earn it. One thing I liked about Barrios is that he works fast even without the new rules. Last year he was pretty rapid between pitches. Very smooth delivery. And the 0-2 to Duran. Tried to hold up, but he went. 
They did appeal to Rob Drake and he rung him up that strike three. One out. I think Jaron's just not doesn't think that he did but we'll take a look at it right here. Ooh, I'd like to see that from the side yeah, side angle. I think the barrel just came a little bit in front right there. Yep. Oh yeah. Barely but. Those biceps couldn't hold it up. I don't think any biceps That's could. right. Massa likes to face him. It's not much of a sample. It's six at bats, but he has four hits and a home run against Barrios. No score first inning. He'll drive that one toward the triangle. Racing back Varsho. Way out there. He'll run it down over the shoulder. Sent that one for a ride. Yeah, he did. Here's the Blue Jays defense presented by Audi. We got Chapman at third base, DeYoung at shortstop, Schneider at second, Guerrero Jr. at first, Merrifield in left, Varsho in center, Springer in right, and the battery, Barrios on the mound, and Kirk doing the catching. Well, good to see JT back in there. Justin Turner's missed the last three games because the heel problem hit the bag awkwardly late in the game in Seattle. But back in there, 286. He's driven in 71 runs. He has almost caught Rafi Devers in the RBI category. You hear me say he's always a professional hitter, and you can attest to that. I mean, he just he doesn't give it bats away, which is amazing. That's the key at this level. You want to stay here a long time, like JT has. Lines that one well hit Springer back it up though makes the play a little bit of a battle out there but the Red Sox will go one two three. To the bullpen Nick Pavetta will take over after Schreiber went one scoreless inning. Nick giving up three runs in seven and a third struck out ten Monday at Seattle that was a straight up start. Giving up five hits. <laughs> His 10th career, 10 strikeout game. Been throwing the ball great. We'll go back to the end of May. Very few in baseball have been throwing it better than him. Yeah, he's really made the most of his demotion going down to the bullpen, and being able to come in situations like this and give the club multiple innings. He could start, he can relieve, come in at a High leverage situation and give him a couple innings to get him out of the jam. Chapman two for four, the home run last night. So he came alive. He had been slumping. 95 miles an hour, he put him away on three pitches. Let's get out of TC. Thanks, OB. It's time for the bullpen report presented by Rocket Software. Modernization without disruption. Nick Pavetta has flourished since joining the bullpen at the end of May. Last time out, he started but entered the game from the bullpen to keep things consistent. Pitching coach Dave Bush says it's that consistency that's been paying off for him. The consistent work out of the bullpen coming in every couple of days has helped him to find more consistency in his mechanics. That has led to more confidence. That has led to more success. He's carried all of that into these longer outings recently 100 pitches and was throwing the ball well into the eighth inning but interesting concept that it's not just coming out of the bullpen guys it's being used a little more frequently that has allowed him to lock in and repeat his mechanics with better consistency. Facing Dalton Varsho here. Well the TC's point since the 28th of May Nick Pavetta leads Major League Baseball in whip opponents batting average and strikeout percentage leads the majors in those categories the league's hitting 124 against him popped into left field for Yoshida and on the edge of the track he's got it Varsho retired and two up two down yeah the big thing is is the fastball I think earlier in the year when he was starting it was very sporadic the way he was throwing that fastball missing up a lot missing out of the zone where hitters right out of, out of the hand were just not even committing to even thinking about swinging that. He is now pounding that zone at the top and finding a way to utilize that fastball in the zone and right at the top of the zone to get some weak contact and swing and misses and then just playing off it with the curveball slider and the sweeper. You know to add on to that you you know he's pitching every couple days which makes a 
big difference. Sometimes as a starter, you got four days off, and you, the consistency just isn't there. Yeah, you can throw a bullpen and all that good stuff, but him coming into games in high leverage situations, not blowout games or mop ups, he's actually pitching to help the Red Sox win, not just pitch innings, and he's done a great job making the adjustment. Two out bases empty. Davis Schneider made his major league debut last night with a home run in his first at bat. And now he drills a single into left. Much to our shock and amazement, he did not announce his retirement after last night's game. <laughs> Incredible. He said, I smiled all the way around the bases. I couldn't believe it. I bet. Yeah, you just did that little uppercut like Don Fry. That's what it looks like, but 2 0 slider, and he's just staying on it. You can see what they like about this player. Yeah, good pop in the minors, 221 home runs. The young out in front on the slider. No scores, second inning. Whit Merrifield would be next, quickly 0 and 2. And that's the spot right there, that fastball. His four seam plays up, he's got some good carry on it. But before it was about three to four inches above the zone so right out of the hand but right there when he lives up the top there that is tough for hitters to get on top of. He'll pop this one up battling the sun Arias going out Duvall coming in Duvall still coming he'll make the play and that is all one man left. In Boston Tom Karen with you down on the field and Dave O'Brien and the guys were talking about all the Blue Jays fans here. Well, as we talked about last night, it is a holiday weekend north of the border. It is the civic holiday, a long weekend in August known by different names depending where you are in Canada. It's Simcoe Day in Toronto, Terry Fox Day in Manitoba, and British Columbia Day in B.C. That's where James Paxton is from, Nick Pavetta as well. I asked Paxton if he remembers. He says he vaguely remembers long weekends in August. Line drive that's going to settle down in center field off the bat of Rafi Devers. He's got a single to begin the second TC. But in all fairness, he didn't remember much. He moved out of Canada when he was 17. He said, you know what? I lost a Monday off in August, but I gained a career. I'll take that switch every day. <laughs> yeah. TC, it's impressive how he bounces around geographically with all of his Canadian cities. It's his hockey background. He relies on that. He truly is the Renaissance man. That's a good call. Well, Duvall will check in here with a runner at first against Jose Barrios. Well, the Red Sox have hit well over the years. He's one and six against Boston, a 4.31 ERA. That's 12 career starts. This year, two starts against the Sox. He's 0 and 1 with a 7.15, allowing nine earned and 11 and a third. He's never pitched great at Fenway either. 2 and 0. Red Sox hoping that holds true. Yeah, going to that bat, Rafi was 5 for 28, so he has a fair well, but good swing right there, too, from him. Those are the ones we love to see from Rafi. I mean, we want to see him drive the ball, hit the gaps, get it out of the park, but those base hits hit hard up the middle like that, redirecting the ball. That gets you to, into those spots where you start. Seeing the ball a little bit better and being able to drive it out. Tristan Casas on deck. Originally, he was batting fifth in the first lineup. Dropped down to the sixth spot today. Blue Jays know something we don't know about the guy on first. I think Rappi's going. This is wondering the same thing. In there for a strike. Drops in that slur. That is his go-to pitch. I mean, that's the one he uses the most. It's got a lot of break to it. Almost, almost 17 and a half inches. Also a four seamer change up on our holding and another cut and a miss and down he goes on the slurve. Strikeout number two for Barrios. That is the exact spot you don't want. You got a right on right matchup but as a pitcher this is a perfect location. 
just right on that bottom of that 90 there, down and away. Borderline strike. It's hard to lay off that. Throw, you're throwing it for a strike. You know he's going to throw it for a strike. And you can actually look for it. Still not hit it. It's got that much break to it. Tristan trying to snap a little over eight. We're seeing a lot more of that too to Tristan. The backdoor sliders, backdoor curveballs. His hot zone is inner half. A lot of lefties too. That's where they want it. You don't. They don't like it up and in. You know, and above the strike zone, and then to that outside edge. They've been trying to go out there. Now you see a mistake in. Ooh. Little grimace there. Changeup call to strike one and one. Casas has been up 20 times in his young career against Barrios. Has seven hits. So he's batting 350 off him. Line drive and that'll be oh. caught and right into a double play to retire the side. It helped make it simpler to manage your finances. PNC Bank helping to make banking easier. Not a picture perfect day at Fenway. No score after the first couple of innings. Top of the order again here for Toronto. It'll be with Merrifield who struck out and his first at bat. And having an excellent year at 299. It is 10th home run last night. And he's stolen 21 bases. He's been a real good fit. The finale of this series coming up tomorrow afternoon at 135. Red Sox will go with an opener again. Chris Bassett, the right hand, who's 10 and 6 with an ERA of 4, will pitch for Toronto. Nice to get Sale and Hauk back in this rotation. Take a little pressure off that bullpen. Although they've done a great job. Well, you just can't stay at this forever, the openers. No. I mean, so many of them, as we mentioned, 12 in the last 40 games. One two pitch. He'll pop that one into foul territory. Pass this over to give that a look, but off into the box seats. They used eight in the last 26 games since July 1st. That's a lot. Yeah, they've been they've been fortunate too with those off days, right? So they had a bunch of those off days, yes. which kind of helped it out a yeah. little bit. But now those off days aren't coming. Nope. They have a tough stretch here of a lot of games, so that's why you need the help on the starting rotation. Up the middle, and that'll be caught. Maria's there to the right side of the bag for the out, one away. Take advantage of the family four packs offer Monday through Wednesday against the Royals. Get four tickets, four Fenway Franks, and four fountain drinks starting at just $99. Head to RedSox.com slash family four packs to grab yours now. Bell reached on an error by the pitcher at that time. It was Schreiber in the first inning trying to bunt. Nothing came of that. Guy played a lot of games for the San Francisco Giants. About 1,200 games. He's gonna jack that one deep toward the wall. That's rising up there. That ball's gone into the monster seats. His 10th home run of the season. Now the third time he has hit a home run in his career off of Nick Pavetta. This is where he just missed his spot on the fastball. Was trying to go up and elevate it, just stayed down right at the quad level. And that Brandon Belt has got some pop. Yeah, he does. He's a big guy. But that ball jumped. I thought that ball was going to be off the wall. Yeah, I think the wind's blowing out. It's hard to tell around here anymore. You try to find a flag that's actually useful to trying to judge which way the wind's blowing, but. It's also too when you got a guy that's got that carry and spin on the ball like the better does you connect on it it will go. Oh yeah. Glad he will pop it up right around second base here's Chang. To put that away. Two gone and we've gotten Vladdy twice. 
But Belt going long. up into the monster seats to make it one to nothing. Yeah, that's a six home run that Blue Jays have hit in this series. That's something you're going to see from them a lot. They're ninth in the AL in stolen bases, so they're not going to steal a ton, but they're going to try to drive the ball out to generate their runs. Here's Springer. Opposite field base hit first time up. He's one for one. I will tell you this, and you guys know it. They swing. They're not taking any pitches. So you better be careful from pitch one. Well, they've already hit six home runs in the series. They came into Fenway with mean intentions. Yeah, don't think that they didn't know that they're 0 and 7 coming into this series against the Red Sox and, and dominated them last year. Springer, a guy who's been so important in postseason play along the line. Devers with a lengthy throw, but off target. And there goes Springer heading to second base as it rolls all the way to the tarp, and he'll stop there. So he gets into scoring position. Devers is with a misfire. I'll tell you, the reason I love this game more than anything is every single series you see something you've probably never seen. I don't think I've ever seen a throw where a runner kicks it on the way to hitting first base. Good job by Raff to get around this, but right there when he planted, hit him wow. right on the shin. Costas had no chance of catching that ball. Yeah, that ball was so far up the line, but that's also one where as a third baseman, you can use the grass. You know, you got to get on top a little bit. He got a little bit to the side there. Got to elevate that arm up as high as you can. To get a big hop. Well, the flip of the glove tells you that Devers is very aware. He's in a pretty nasty defensive slump. That's a base hit and an error to allow the runner to get. And he's going to run. Here's the throw, and it's too high out of the glove. And it rolls almost all the way to the plate. Right there, that was a great play by Raffi. And that ball could have been down the left field line. And this is the Achilles heel of the 2023 Red Sox is defense. Raffi getting oh, on up wow. there. And you see how you know he's loose with that glove, and that's what snaps it back and all the way almost to the to Connor Wong right back at him. That ball gets over his head. Springer's easily scoring. But this defense is the thing they have to clean up in these last 55 games. That one shot toward the alley. There's nobody out there all the way to the running track. That'll bring in Springer. Kirk will slide into second base with a double. And Toronto leads it two to nothing. Yeah there's another <laughs> elevated fastball kind of didn't get it high enough or they were looking for it up there and just. Got to tip your cap to Kirk there. That ball was up and out of the zone. That's and that's the beautiful thing about the high pitch. You see him get that top hand on. I mean, you got to get that top hand onto it. He rolled that hand over to get to that thing. If you keep that bottom hand underneath that ball, you don't have a chance. You're fouling that ball off or you're missing it. Yeah. He took that top hand and just whipped it. Yeah, Red Sox fans trying to shout down the many Toronto fans. There's a check swing roller. Here comes Raffi oh, trying to get it. And the runners are going to be safe at first and third. Thought maybe the base runner got in the way of Devers here. Yeah, so he was already by him by the time he's going to make that play. If he touches him in any way, they yeah. would probably call that. But tough play right there, too. That's a do or die. I mean, Chapman couldn't roll that out there in a better spot. That's a base hit, and this has become a bit of a disaster of an inning. A home run, a base hit, an error, a double, and now another infield hit. Red Sox have committed two errors in the game. Realize they have made 27 more errors than the Toronto Blue Jays have. That's a lot. That's I think a lot. One thing you're seeing in this series too is, you know, the Blue Jays are getting lucky. They're they're finding little placement hits that are in there, but they're also hitting the ball pretty hard, driving it out, and like you saw there with Kirk getting that double. Things are going well for them right now. Yeah, shut them down here. They're getting the little breaks, the little half hits, the little choppers off the plate that never get 
get a chance to get anybody out and then they take advantage of the situation and they score a couple runs from it. Dalton Varsho 0 for 1 he's flying to left. They're trying to turn this into a big inning. Varsho good pop two, 13 home runs. And Pavetta home of the 1 1. Yeah, one unique thing, too, that used to be more old school because they had this, you know, the axe handle now. Marshall's got that pinky underneath the knob of the bat. A lot of guys like that at the bottom there just to try to whip that bat through. Pavetta in need of a K. Did you say a majority of guys do that? They get the pinky finger off the bat. I, I saw guys do that when we played. Well, yeah, you see it right there. The pinkies is down below the knob, but it just always felt really odd to me. You always worry about the handmade bone with that too. Yeah, that's the one that put Yu Chang. On the IL. Yeah, a lot of guys that, and I don't know how that just comes about too, because your whole life, when you're a young kid, you're always, and half the time they're telling the coaches are telling you, choke up. But a lot of guys like that pinky below that knob. Two down, two on. Spoil that one. Good fastball, 96. Feels good till you hit one off the end. Oh. John Schreiber was the opener. He went one inning, giving way to Nick Pavetta. He's run into difficulty here in the third inning. One two on the way, and a block by Wong. Brandon Belt started this with a home run. Here comes the eighth pitch of the at bat for Varsho. And he's got himself a base hit, and that'll produce another run. Kirk in to score at three to nothing Toronto. That's four consecutive hits now for the Blue Jays. Yeah, unfortunately, he tried to go back with a curveball, try to backdoor it, just kind of left it up in the air, up in the strike zone. Just very hittable. That might have been the slider though. At 88. Yeah, it just jammed him. Yeah. You know, just hard slider. You're sitting back a little bit, thinking maybe you're going to get that knuckle curve. There it is again. Another base hit, not hit hard. I mean, they're either hitting hard and hitting homers or getting those little bleeders or infield hits. Youngster Schneider is one for one with a single. First and second, two gone. Chapman down to second. Varsho with the RBI single on it first. Mentioned the Yankees beat Houston today, three to one in the Bronx. And that means if the Red Sox do lose, they fall into last place. Behind the Yankees, here's the two nothing. He'll misfire with that one. Long inning for Nick. Yeah, he needs to take a deep breath. I know you don't have a whole lot of time to do that, but he needs to gather himself a little bit. Make sure he's throwing quality strikes here. This is the eighth batter he's facing in the inning. And he walks him. That's going to load him up for Paul DeYoung. So they're all filled up with two away. The young is 0 for 1 with a fly out to right. Just acquired from the St. Louis Cardinals. He'll take ball one.
No place to put him. It's Chapman at third, Varsho at second, Schneider on at first. With two away. And a little chopper up the middle. Chang near the bag will tap the base for the out and retire the side. But they also get three runs to take a 3 nothing advantage. Like three cents off per gallon when you use Gulf Pay. See the app for details. Socks it out three nothing. Bottom half of the third inning. Urias batting for the first time today. Got his first Red Sox hit in the fifth inning last night. Scored a run as well. Connor Wong to follow him, and then Yu Chang bottom third here against Jose Barrios. Back on May 1st he gave up 11 hits to the Red Sox and on June 30 he allowed three home runs. Kind of had his number. But he's got a little cushion early on. You're going to be seeing a lot of Arias at second base. 2-1. And punched in there. Now you wonder a lot of times when hitters are taking that 2 1 fastball. That in today's game, you're seeing a lot more breaking balls than that 2 1 count. Well, of course, it's a swing count. He lines that one headed for the corner. That'll get to the base of the monster. He's taken off for second. He'll be able to double. Had a couple of nice swings his first couple of games with Boston. And a nice start to the third inning. It yeah, went back to that fastball. Was trying to go in and left it a little up and out over the plate. Good job by Urias just to be quick inside with those hands. Turn on it. Out to impress and he's got himself an extra base hit. So Connor Wong trying to pick him up. Rough night last night at the plate. He was 0 for 4, struck out three times. I think he might be looking for a slider today. <laughs> Got enough of him yesterday, didn't he? Sure did. He wasn't about ready to let that fastball go. No. By. Still hitting 313 over the last 22. He'll roll that to third. Chapman, the vacuum cleaner, will get him. Arias had to stay put. One away. It's impressive how fast Wong gets down that line, too. Yeah. For a catcher. I mean, when he hits that initially, you're thinking, eh, you know, easy play. I mean, he, he got down that line quick. Yeah, it looks like a normal, but look at him run. He's the third fastest catcher. In Major League Baseball. Alejandro Kirk is number one. He's definitely not number one. <laughs> He's he might be the most entertaining guy I watch. I'll tell you what, his slide at second base. Oh yeah. It was impressive. Pretty, was. It was a pretty pop-up slide. Now he can play. But not fleet of foot. Yu Chang with a home run last night. Some of some of us aren't. You either got it or you don't. Urias at second. Change up that time. That'll put him away as he strikes out. I'm talking about Alejandro Kirk. Watch this. And the slow mo makes it just look like artwork. Watch this. Just a beautiful. Look at that. Yeah, little pop up slide. I like it. Did you say artwork? It's art. It's a form of art. Duran 0 for 1, a strikeout. He has just tortured the Toronto pitching staff this year. Three more hits last night. Play on and a dive back by Arias. 
Red Sox longest home run of the year at Fenway was back on May 1st. It was against Barrios. It went 434 feet, and it was Jaron Duran who hit it. Yeah, good time for one of those right now. Mm -hmm. Just like he did last night, cut that lead. Good yep. changeup right there. Yeah, and the changeup, and that was the pitch he threw to Yu Chang at the end there. He's throwing a lot. He, that's one pitch that he's. Actually, throwing he's, he stays pretty consistent year to year, but he's increased his changeup to righties, and it's been kind of effective, to you know, with two strikes to get those bad swings. One one coming. He's going heavy to that change, and he's out in front one and two. Masi Yoshida to hit next. Yeah, and, that, and as you can see there, that pitch arsenal is very balanced mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. That's hard for a hitter. Yeah, because you don't know what's coming. <laughs> you can you can sit on a, something that he throws a majority of the time and guess right half the time. Yeah, and the hardest pitchers are the ones that have things going both directions out of hand. Yeah, a little bit going right, a little bit going left, and if if a pitcher is sitting to one side of the plate and hitters can remove half the plate. It's a big advantage to the hitters. 2 2. The Red Sox trying not to waste a golden scoring opportunity. Arias led off the inning with a double. He's still out there with two down. Yeah, a lot of times, after a guy's late like that on that swing, you don't want to go to the changeup. As you pitch him up. This is actually a good time, in my opinion, though, Wake, to throw it out and away. That is in there for a strike three right on the edge and the Red Sox with a squander here in the third. For coverage of the WEI Ness and Jimmy Fund Radio Telethon presented by Arbella Insurance. Arbella here for the Jimmy Fund here for good. Red Sox trail three nothing fourth inning. Long inning in the third for Nick Pavetta. He faced nine men, gave up five hits and three runs, including a home run to Brandon Belt. With Merrifield lined out to second, he'll ground that to the middle, picked off by Arias. Nick could really use a quick inning. As we toss it down to Tom Karen. Thanks, OB. It's Bernie and Phil's comforts of home. Uh, why wait for a tax holiday? Save now with up to 20% off your qualifying purchase. Uh, last night and the three nothing deficit notwithstanding, the Red Sox have won nine of 11 here at Fenway Park, averaging over six runs a game. Trying to avoid back to back losses at home since June. Last time they lost two in a row was to Miami. You remember when they were swept since then, including road games, they're 17 and 10. So home has been good to the Red Sox guys just not yet on this homestand. A long way to go today. They've been out hit seven to two. If the Red Sox lose today or tomorrow they're going to lose their third consecutive series. Have an opportunity to avoid that fate. As Pavetta deals a one one and that'll miss inside. Bell with a home run up into the monster seats in the third. He was with the Giants when they won a world championship in 2012 and 14. Some good teams back then. A big clubhouse guy too. Yeah. Little number here Pavetta on that. Lobs it over to get him. Two down. He'll take on Vladdy next. One of the biggest reasons why the Red Sox have had so much success here is the amount of left handed hitters they have and their ability to utilize that wall and go the other way with it. You know, they're not just pull hitters. They're going to they're going to go the other way and that's a huge advantage for lefties that wall. Everyone always thinks it's the righties but. 
You know, when you get guys like Adam Duvall, who is mainly a pull hitter, Fenway plays great for a hitter like Adam Duvall. But for the lefties in particular, you saw Jaron Duran take one out over that way. And just other batters, Yoshida going off the wall last night as well. Mile high pop up here by Guerrero. And Raphael Devers with the grab. Fast inning for Nick Pavetta. He needed that one. Eight. As we get set for the bottom half of the fourth inning, Yoshida Turner Devers against Barrios. May have been on the verge of pitching himself into some difficulty. We gave up a leadoff double by Arias in the third inning, but the Red Sox went one, two, three after that. Yoshida 0 for 1. He drilled one deep to the triangle in right center first time up, but that was caught by Varsho. That ball was hit, too. Yeah, it was. This is not the ballpark where you want to go into that corner. 420. Just got to hit it further than 420, you. Pretty simple. Yeah. It's just math. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of physics. <laughs> Or geometry. <laughs> I'll tell you that it is a, it is a poke out there some days. It'll rattle that one foul. Turner on deck, then Devers. They're all getting their second look at Jose Barrios. Yoshida is four for seven off him in his career. They'll fly that foul. Absolutely beautiful day at Fenway. They're ready to be awakened. Very calm right now, the fans. And there we go. And that's going to be a base hit into left field. Yoshida one for two. Red Sox again beginning an inning with a base hit. That's three consecutive innings now with a hit to start it. Good piece of hitting right here. <laughs> neck. That's a neck. Ball. It's unbelievable. He got on top of that too. He's amazing. Masa can hit. He can hit. Let's see. Yes, you just you tip your hat. How did you hit that? Well, Justin Turner certainly can't too. He's 0 for 1 with a liner right. Three game hitting streak returning to lineup after missing three games today. I like that big hole on the right side of the infield there. Mm -hmm. Looper uh -huh. toward right, and that'll dunk down for a hit. Yoshida to third. He's going to get there. Great. Standing up. Great base run in there by Yosh. Knew exactly where that ball was going to land and just kept going. No one happier than Sam with his picks. He just got two thirds of his picks right here, back to back. <laughs> Those are the most beautiful hits. Little duck part in the right. Well, now the Red Sox trying to take advantage. First and third, nobody out. And here's Raffi. He singled his first trip, one for one. Raffi's not looking to get a 3 1 game right there. He's looking to tie it up. This is where you got to go back to that first half yeah. bat, have that kind of approach and swing to it. Play for the big inning. Try not to do too much. There's one career home run against this guy, and then going to roll that one foul. 0 and 2. <laughs> There's a stare off between Springer and the ball. Group. You get it. He almost played rock, paper, scissors, too. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> she eventually did. She won. Two strikes. Fish ain't biting today. Let's see if he elevates here. Mainly uses that sinker and slurve. Shook off twice. 
Rafi hitting 355 against the Blue Jays this year. High drive, right field. Watch it go. It is gone. And it is tied. shook off he probably should think about it again and say hey, stick with my catcher next time because that was not the pitch you need to throw to Rafi you know you that was three straight curveballs he threw and I'm like please don't want another one because he's sitting all over it and he got one that didn't bounce wow what an at bat by Devers here yeah and if I'm facing Rafi as a pitcher that is not the area I want to go to something slurvy down no you got to elevate try to get a strike out there number 26 that Red Sox home run brought to you by Audi visit your New England Audi dealer today you had just said he's not looking to make it three to one no four slurves in a row and three three new ball game as Duvall takes a strike. So he's up to 79 runs batted in. Yeah, you don't come into Fenway and try to bully the Red Sox fans, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. They needed a reason to get noisy, and they got one. So right back at it against Barrios and company. And Duval will look at the ball. He struck out first time up. Rafi now with 12 RBIs in nine games against Toronto. Is that, two his, is that his first RBI since they came off the West Coast? It was indeed. Did Com not drive one in on that West Coast swing. Comforts of home. Masi Yoshida started it with that neck ball base hit. Turner blooping one into right field and it got the inning to Raffi for the blast. Down he goes on the slurb. First out here in the fourth inning. Yeah, here's slurb just scooped it. I mean, most people go, man, how do you hit that? But that's what Raffi loves. He loves that breaking yeah. ball down in the zone. And he just drives that pitch. That's unbelievable. I mean, that ball, I'm, I'm sure he was supposed to bounce that, but the way he reaches out full extension before it gets to even to home plate, just that's some amazing power. That's some. I mean, obviously, it's a big hit because the Red Sox have tied the game, but. The way things were proceeding here early on, and I don't know how it's going to play out the rest of the day, but Red Sox desperately needed something positive to happen. Yeah, that was it, too. I mean, you, you needed your big dogs at the top to start it and get it going, and that's the big thing right now. And, and these bullpen games, too, you don't know what's going to happen. Right. That's the hardest part. But Barrios, man, he, he does not like seeing that Boston or Red Sox across that chest. No, he doesn't. Home run cut there by Tristan. We haven't seen that swing from him a lot. But the helmet's almost flying off. He's a little frustrated, been hitting the ball right at people. A couple balls up the middle that could have been hits. Good fight right there. Recently named the American League Rookie of the Month for July. After hitting 348 with seven home runs for the month. Trying to get on here with one down. Two and two. Yeah, trying to go front door there, trying to get him to swing and miss at something. Or overcommit and maybe check swing. Let's see if he goes back door on that now. Downstairs with the change up, he wouldn't bite. It's three and two. 
That's a good take right there. That's that's a nasty changeup. See if he throws it again. Wiggled his fingers to Kirk. Big swing popped up into left. On the 3 2, and Merrifield with the grab for the second out. Win big with the Red Sox Foundation 50 50 raffle. Buy tickets at redsox.com slash 50 50 to the sixth inning of today's game for a chance to win half the net jackpot. See official rules for full details. Luis Arias double down the left field line his first trip one for one. for a call strike back to the slurve which has been his popular pitch today. And the 0-2 he'll punch him out but the Red Sox punch back on a home run by Devers it's 3 3. Hey big man. Oh, hey Dave. Told Billy and Jenny visit Prima. A new hot spot in Charlestown serving Italian cuisine. Catch Dining Playbook tomorrow night at 9, only on Nesson. Driven by your New England Chevy dealers. Well, brand new ball game as we bring you the top half of the fifth. After the Rafi Devers home run, a three run shot to tie this game. George Springer, two for two, and has scored a run. And then Kirk and then Chapman for Toronto. Blue Jays winners last night. They took a 3 0 lead in this one, but the Red Sox come right back with the big fly from Raphael. Fastball for a strike. I think this is where it gets a little interesting with uh, Pavetta coming in with an opener. I mean, I guess you're considering him just as a starter that comes in a little later, but. It was a little different when the off days. Now you don't have these off days. So what's his pitch count? Is it a starter's pitch count? Did he stop at 80? I would say he's going as long as he can. Uh, probably 80 to what was his last actual? He went seven innings. Yeah, he had 100, I think. It, over yeah, 100. 104. And he's going to walk him to the Springer on to begin inning number five. And that will be his second free pass today. And send up Alejandro Kirk. Another opener tomorrow for the Red Sox. Bayo will pitch on Monday against Kansas City. The Royals are the hottest team in baseball right now, by the way. Won seven in a row. Yeah, Bobby Witt is on fire, too. And for fans that have not seen Bobby Witt Jr. play, he is fun to watch. So tune into that this week. Steal bases, hit for pop. He's a five tool player. A strike to Kirk, who doubled last trip, drove in a run. I mean, the Royals are 36 and 75. They've had an awful year, but not lately. Won eight out of their last 10, too. Bounding ball. Chang to second one on the first. Red Sox will turn the double play. Bang bang at first to get Kirk. Well, we just got proof that he's not number one on the list of catchers running down the line. A perfect double play. Six four three. Yeah, I don't think too many run. I, I don't think I think Kirk might be the only guy that gets safe on, or sorry is out on that double play right there too. The way Yu Chang had to go get that. Thought for sure they were just basically getting the out at second. Chapman fouls that one back. He's got one for two with a single. Yeah, so prevented his last start, or yeah, it was a start. Yeah. <laughs> so confused these days. I know, right? 104 total pitches. Yeah, I think they're going to ride him as long as they can today. Although, as TC mentioned, he wanted to keep his bullpen routine so he came out of the pen to make the start. He ran 
ran out of the bullpen. Yeah, some people like that. And it's 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 worked for him ever since he's been put in the bullpen, so why change it? You don't need to rest. I used to hate that going in there and sitting down, especially on the road. Two one. Past him. And you warm up and then you sit down on the bench and wait. Matt Chapman's hit 15 home runs. It won last night. He had been two for 20 with 11 strikeouts coming into this series. He's got three hits. Yeah, I love going back to that fastball. He beat him with that fastball before that one. And you can't throw too many same speed pitches to this guy. He's pretty good. Swing and a miss to put him away with a slider. He struck him out and he faces only three men. Get the tickets you want and the service you deserve. Visit aceticket.com or call 1 800 My Seats now. All tied up in the bottom of the fifth. Jaron Duran scheduled to bat third this inning. Seven game hitting streak, guys. One of two American League players with 20 or more steals and a slugging percentage over 500. We've seen the speed and the power. I spoke with Matt for the game last night. He credits his coaches and the veterans in the clubhouse for helping him reach his potential. The hitting coach Pete Fatsy is helping stay diet stay dialed in and Justin Turner has given him some tips over the course of the season that says helps him remain consistent through the ups and the downs and that was a little different last year lately it's mostly been on the up a two run homer last night one of three hits it's got three three hit games against Toronto this season guys last 41 games TC is hitting almost 370. It's a pretty lengthy stretch for Duran. Wong will fly that one deep toward the triangle. Marshall sprinting back and he runs it down. He can really play the outfield. He's made some plays already in this series out there in that spot. Wow. What a catch. I mean, this is just wrong on so many levels. Connor Wong just totally missing those slurs by a mile. Makes a great adjustment. And oh, <laughs> That is the second one today. I think any other ballpark that's off the wall or over. Good outfield they have. Yeah. Yu Chang, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Yeah, later in this game, you'll probably see, you know, Whit Merrifield was a second baseman and an infielder. Now he's in the left field. But last night we saw Kiermaier goes into center, Varsho goes over to left. I mean, you have three center fielders in your outfield. That's right with Springer playing over in right field. Crazy. Pretty good outfield defensively, that's for sure. Bernardino now beginning to warm up in the Red Sox bullpen. Tied up 3 3. And a foul at home plate by Chang. Back to the long running catch by Varsho. Kind of hesitated too on that first step. I think, I think initially he didn't think it was going to go as far as it did. It also shows how much strength Connor Wong has. Mm -hmm. Great man. He reminds me so much of his father. He picked up that speed. Oh my goodness. He went. That ball no. hit him in the chest. Two and two. This ball took off. I think it was more just the look of how you swapped sw <laughs> the actual pitch. Working him in. I mean, way in. Three and two. Change up that time. Saw somebody swing and miss and it hit him in the stomach against Pedro one day. Yeah, that definitely making Sports Center on that one. Oh, yeah. Up the middle. Schneider ranging, flips it. And three steady defensively his first couple big league games too. And there were two gone. And now Duran trying to make contact here. Jaron struck out two times. Tied up 3-3 three, three here in the last half of the fifth inning. You know so much of 
the praise for what's happened with Duran, of course, should be heaped on him. But TC mentioned Justin Turner. And you know, a lot of guys lean on certain players in the clubhouse, and, and Justin Turner is one of those guys who's very active helping his teammates. And well, when you talk about leadership, that's first and foremost what that means. A hundred percent. I mean, guys before me, older than me, you know, schooled me on how to do things and how to, especially, the, it's not more of the physical, it's the mental side of it, to how to adjust to failure, how to get back in the, on the saddle after, you know, a mistake. And it's, you know, veterans like that, you know, that go to the young players and say, hey, listen, man, this is how you're supposed to do it. This is how you're supposed to feel. Don't get too down on yourself. That's the beauty of the game. You can go for five one night, have four punch outs, and get embarrassed. And the next day, you could be three for four. But it's all, it's your mindset. Turn the page. And we always used to say that right in the clubhouse. Yeah, yeah. Turn the page, and it works. It's one of those only you know. It, that's the hard part. You know, a lot of guys said with starters, right? You have a bad outing, you got to wait four days. I used to joke around. I'm like, well, that's not so bad. I was like, <laughs> I'm going about 10 days strong of being terrible <laughs> right now. I want that off day, you know? Yeah, but, but yeah, you got to grind. As a starting pitcher, you want to get back out there and redeem yourself, and you can't. Two and two. And yeah, that was always the joke, right? Like for us, it was always like, man, have you ever been in 0 for 21? And you just feel like you can't breathe, and every time you go to bat, you're suffocating. <laughs> But yeah, that's what you need the veterans. You need the veterans that have been through it, done it, and say, hey, I've been there and done it. Keep going. Ooh. That's going to be caught by Barrios on the liner back up the middle to retire the side. They made a couple of defensive plays. We're still tied 3 3. Brought to you by Nissan. We make cars that thrill. Shop NissanUSA.com. Jordan's Furniture. Enjoy 15% off everything in store and online. And by Viva Tequila Seltzer. Dips the malt. Add tequila. Sixth inning coming your way. Red Sox and Toronto knotted up 3 3 middle game of the series. Brennan Bernardino has been really good coming out of the pen again. Started a game recently at San Francisco. Tossed a scoreless first inning. And then gave up a run in the second. Taking over for Nick Pavetta, who went four, allowing three runs on six hits. And he'll get the bottom third of the order. Varsho, the single to draw him in a run. He's also made a couple of really nice plays in the outfield. Talk about the job that the bullpen has done. Bernardino's. This is his 33rd game he's been in. It's the third most behind Chris Martin and uh, Winkowski. It's actually started five of his last nine appearances, so he's been Mr. Opener. Yeah. Against Texas, Oakland, Oakland again, the Mets and the Giants. He started all of those games. 2 1. David Schneider, the rookie on deck, and Paul DeYoung. That'll fill it up 3 and 2. The Blue Jays have a very heavy right handed lineup every night, too. Hard for the lefties in that pen to get those good matchups. Payoff pitch. He strikes him out. One away, and let's go to Adam. OB, thanks very much. Coming up on WB Mason X Trainings Live after the game, Hooba WB Mason celebrating 125 years. We'll break this one down. Jim Rice really saw uh, a lot in Rafael Devers in terms of his first at bat and the swing that he put on that base hit, and then, of course, hitting the home run. We'll break that down. Speaking of Jim, a lot of Jim Rice fans out here today, guys, and they dared me to wear this Jim Rice style batting helmet. Uh, so I'm going to take him up on the dare, and I'm going to wear the helmet on TV. There it is. Very popular. Oh uh, yeah, that's, it's not me. It's it's Pap and Jim. Line driving a base hit by 
Snyder here, and he's aboard with one away. I think that also doubles as an ice cream <laughs> filler, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a giant Sunday. <laughs> really big Sunday. I don't know if you could eat that much ice cream right now. <laughs> I saw that at some ballpark. I was like, the, look, the tiny one? Oh, it was the big one? The big one. I was Get like, out it's supposed to be a small one, I think. It's for Happy a family of four. Yeah. Happy in Texas. It's like a $37 Sunday. <laughs> Schneider, by the way, with a multi hit game and back to back games, his first two in the big leagues. Two singles today. He can hit. Just watching two games, you just look at the little things he does. He can hit. 2 0 slider was right on it for the base hit. That one up the middle, and then the homer yesterday. Ooh. Paul DeYoung 0 for 2. Toronto is out, hit the Sox today 8 to 5. That'll be a strike. Bill no Miller's been calling that pitch in just a little bit off. You know, as a hitter, it's frustrating, especially with the lefty. That pitch is tough when it's coming into you. But he's been consistent with it. Right hander Winkowski up in the bullpen. Last used on Tuesday. It was a line drive base hit. It's stiff in the center field. Schneider will pull up at second. And here comes Toronto again. They'll be the top of the order in Merrifield next with a couple of men on. Yeah, he was trying to go inside on that. Just left it out over the middle. And Dave Bush will trot out for a conversation. Now you're getting into the real dangerous part of their lineup. In a 3 3 game, nine hits now for the Blue Jays. With Merrifield playing left field these days. Played his college ball with Jackie Bradley Jr. at the University of South Carolina. He said when Jackie showed up, that's when I moved back to the infield. <laughs> I knew where I was going to play. He was right. Jackie's one of the best outfielders I've ever seen play. Me too. No doubt. I mean, it was remarkable the reads he got and his arm. Great, great outfielder defensively. Murray Field is struck out, lined out, and grounded out today. I saw one of the differences with Jackie was, you know, we, we credit outfielders who make great catches, long running catches, whatever. And then they lunge at the last moment or they dive to make a spectacular catch. So many times Jackie didn't have to do that. He was smooth. He outran the baseball most of the time. Great outfielders don't panic either. No. Right. Which is the opposite of what I did. <laughs> <laughs> and for a strike, and for the moment I hopped over that line, it was full panic mode. <laughs> Jackie was so graceful, though. Like his head never moved, his strides were smooth. Yeah, he reminded me so much of Andrew Jones. Yeah, that's a good, good, good comparison there. 2 1. Did not offer. Oops. And the curveball, 3 and 1. Begging here, I think. But it's okay. We're allowed. That was close. I just hit a ground ball, second base. 3 1 to Whit Merrifield. Line. He was sitting on that one. Look now. This is JBJ against Trey Mancini in Baltimore. And everybody thought the ball was gone except for that guy scaling the wall. Sensational wow. catch there, Camden Yards. And Trey Mancini <laughs> paying his respect on that. That's class right there. Did the pitcher blow out on that? Was that Brazier? Yeah. He, he thought, thought it was out. He thought it was gone. He thought oh, it was God. way gone. I thought he got hurt. No. <laughs> well, he thought he thought he had been hit by a lightning bolt, but yeah. <laughs> it looked like he blew out his leg. Payoff pitch. And he walked him, and the bases are all loaded up for Belt. He's already cranked a home run today. So Bernardino in trouble. 
Statcast is powered by Google Cloud. Back to that third inning blast. Yeah, this is back in the third inning. Fastball that was trying to go up. Veta had a glove on in the game, and so did Belt had a bat. But this ball just took off. 108 exit velocity with a 417 foot distance. Maybe next year, Google Cloud will start adding the bats and gloves. <laughs> next year. Filed away by Belt. He was certainly in hitting mode in that first one, that curveball. He's also reached on an error today. Red Sox have made two. They're all loaded up. Schneider at third. DeYoung is second. Merrifield now on at first, and that's a strike, and it's 0 2. Vladdy Guerrero lurking on deck. Bernardino getting in front. And the 0-2 pitch. There's a high fly twisting down the left field line foul. Be another big crowd today. What do you think about a sinker in here, Wake? Nope. I'm throwing a ball. I don't care where. I'm not throwing a strike here. Base hit into left field. That was the sinker. In to score is Schneider, and they are reloaded as it comes back into home plate. And Toronto retakes the lead 4 3. And Cora coming out. Third hit of the inning. Yeah, he threw a good pitch right before that, but slider away. He just can't throw a strike here. You cannot throw a strike there. You're up, you're up in the count 0 2. Lefty on lefty. I know it's supposed to be elevated, but I can't make that mistake. And the reason I said sinker in, because if you look at a lot of stuff left on left with Brandon Belt, that's a pitch he misses or he rolls over, he hits that to first base hard. Yep. Winkowski coming in more in a moment. It's the official realtor of the Boston Red Sox by Viva Tequila Seltzer, ditch them all at Tequila. And by Granite City Electric Supply, celebrating 100 years of service to New England. You guys have both played a lot of big games. Most important moment doesn't always happen in the ninth inning. Sometime along the line, it'll happen in the sixth inning. Yeah. And here it is. Yeah, that's where the game is now going to high leverage situations. And that's why Winkowski's into the game and a cut and a miss by Guerrero tried to find Lansdowne. He is one for four with a double against Wink. Toronto the man at every base and a run in. They have forged into the lead again. One and one. Wink is coming out throwing some missiles at 98. This is the beautiful thing when you see from him from last year the change. Lossy is just so much higher. Went with a cutter. Yeah, he's a different guy from a year ago. I mean, you couldn't, you didn't see too many fastballs. He couldn't get a lot of whiffs on fastballs. Mm -hmm. This year, you're seeing a lot more. Set a number of gigantic strikeouts this year. Ran it in. It was 98, three balls and a strike on Vladdy. Sitting there with 18 home runs, a man at every base. It's a big pitch right here. Yeah, this is huge. You want to put yourself in this situation, but you definitely got to throw a strike. It's got to be a quality strike, though. Got to get a ground ball here. 3 1 to Vladimir. Oof. That was 98 again. He's beating him with that fastball, though. Yeah. George Springer would be next. Go to that, back to that 98, or you go to that cutter. Wade? You got to go with the 98 still. I mean, he hasn't proved that he's on top of it yet. So why, why speed up his bat here? Three and two, bases full. Bounding ball up the middle. Chang to the base, got it out there. Double play. Winkowski comes through again. Toronto does have the lead, but he gets out of the jam.
huge pitch. Went back to the 98 sink inside, and Vladdy hits it perfectly to Yu Chang to double him up. Pitch of the game. Yeah. No doubt about it. The moment. The moment of the afternoon so far. Red Sox still trailing 4 3. A high fly by Massa into left field, Merrifield. With the catch there in the edge of the track. Back to that double play. The only thing better than a strikeout of Guerrero there was this. I mean, the placement is just, that is just Taylor made. Easy as you can get right there from the shortstop. <laughs> He's been something else. If you've been following the Red Sox really closely, you know how valuable Winkowski has been. With runners in scoring position, they're batting 172 off them. And whenever Alex Cora has the game on the line, no matter where it is, unless it's the ninth inning, and that's going to be Kenley, he's going with Winkowski. Don't blame him. Turner off the end of the bat will pop this one up into foul ground for Chapman. Two gone. The All State mayhem moment today. Yeah, this came back in the fourth inning. Sox down three to nothing. Four slurves in a row, and see you later. Go get him, Raf. Raphael home run number 26 to tie the ball game at that point 3 3 with a three run blast he's up to 79 runs batted in. I wonder what that is whatever you do don't throw him a slurve. Pete Walker the pitching coach out to talk with Barrios. Raphael singled along with the home run. Second career home run against the right hander. You, you sitting on slurve here? Cool. Look at meters. <laughs> Change up for ball one. 4 3 Toronto. They doubled up the Red Sox and hits 10 to 5. You know what makes me really nervous? <laughs> when a hitter, as good a hitter as he is, he just takes to knowing that there's no chance you're throwing me a strike here. Yeah. Okay, on deck, he struck out twice. They're probably saying, hey, be very smart here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hit him. Oh, no swing. He did not offer. They did appeal to Roderick. He said no swing, but hit him. Raffy hit was him. hit by the pitch. That's what I thought. <laughs> I, I thought heard he, it. I thought he went around. No, I so thought. they sent him to first. It. Watch yeah. this. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. He's in the shin. <laughs> Close to the same spot as last night. I think last night I hit him right in the ankle bone. He does some crazy things in that box. <laughs> I'll tell you. Second eight in a row, he's been hit. Garcia Cabrera side by side in their pen. Oh, no. Did nope. not. And it's ball one. Duvall has struck out two times today. Third, and he will stop there to be a double for Duvall. Well, he didn't kill it, but he hit it in the perfect spot. It's second and third with two away. Yeah, from this angle, I couldn't tell if he was going to make a good play on it down in the corner. Here's a little slurve to Duvall. Just kind of flips it down the left field line. Let's see where this hits. This could this could have gone anywhere. Takes a really good hop just for the, for Merrifield to play it. Oh man. One little bobble, tie tie game there. You've seen that before. Oh yeah. Wow. They're going to the lefty. I thought they might potentially walk. And... Oh, Koss is coming up. Schneider coming out. And the day is done for Jose Barrios. And leaving behind two men in scoring position. He is not a happy camper. Two down. We'll have more in a moment. Service. We're always here to get you there. Ennis Cabrera. They got him in July from the St. Louis Cardinals. 
38 appearances, 485 earned run average. Very tough against lefties. The Red Sox will counter that with the expected move of Rob Ref Snyder, who did pinch hit last night in the eighth inning and took a walk. And that, of course, has been a lefty killer. It's the guy who's really very hard to hit if you're a left hander so this should be a fascinating matchup Red Sox with runners at second and third after the double by Duvall. So the line on Barrios they're five and two thirds as he walked off the mound he apologized to Rafi Devers for hitting him on the leg. Red Sox have knocked that guy around though really going back several years. Rep Snyder climbs in hitting 272 there are two out. He'll take ball one. Cabrera holding lefties to a 194 weight. It's be interesting. Let's see if he goes out of here. I know. That's what I was just thinking. And the one nothing. That'll be a strike. A lot of breaking stuff so far. Base hit. Red Sox could get back on top. Ooh. There's the gas. And six. Yeah, he's got the four seams, got the slider, and then mixes in kind of equally the curveball, sinker, and changeups to righties. About 35% fastballs, about 28% sliders. Two down and a 2 1 pitch. To Ref Snyder. He had a hack. 95. So many misses, but made a good catch. Wasn't you, Yuke, was it? No. No. <laughs> nice. Save the baby. Wow. And the Ooh. baby is <laughs> super. There was upset. one underneath him, too. 2 2. Swung on and missed. Struck him out. And the Red Sox strand a pair. First pitch presented by Rodenheiser Home Services. We will preview the series finale against the Toronto Blue Jays. Long home stand underway. Red Sox dropping last night, trailing here 4 3. Red Sox have not led in the ball game. They've been out hit 10 6. Springer will knock that one to the right side. Arias tries to throw it into the dirt and get it there, but not in time. And Springer has his third hit today. A single to begin the seventh inning. That's a great effort right there. Yeah, it was. Is. I mean, comes up with the play, but then watch this. Just the roll took him into a bad spot and just trying to spike it into the ground. Not much you can do there. See how you get offset there? Gets in the wrong position. Well, Chang has gone from short over to first, and now Pablo Reyes is playing shortstop. As Kirk fouls it away. They had a double that drove in a run in the third inning. Four runs, 11 hits for the Blue Jays, three runs, six hits, two errors for Boston. Mentioned the Yankees had an early game, and they knocked off Houston 3-1. to one. That's scalded. A diving oh. play by Reyes. Superman dive to steal one from Kirk. Wow. One down. This infield's trying to show some leather here and just laying out. We're right, OB. Superman. Wait. Left the frame. Spectacular play. Chapman is one for three with a single. Winkowski staying on to pitch. After getting a giant double play off the bat of Vladimir Guerrero in the sixth inning with the bases loaded to end the threat. And it's 0 2, throwing 98. Chapman is a guy who's never really minded striking out a lot. 
did hit a home run here last night. Man, he'll strike out again for the third time today. He will take a seat, two away. Uh, good breaking ball here. Set him up with the 298 right by and kind of left check hipped. Throw it right at, it, at his left hip with some break and he just freezes, and gets the call. Varsho one for three in RBI single. They got three of their runs in one inning back in the third. That's the pitch too for Wink is that cutter. I mean fastball definitely is when it's at 98 the way it plays but that cutter's got that vertical depth to it. Yeah. It's, a it's almost like split ish. The way it kind of dips down usually that cutter is going to go more horizontal for a lot of guys but his just has this little tight dip to it. Little up at 97. Texas with a 7 6 lead on Miami there in the seventh inning. Red Sox reportedly were involved in possible trade scenario with Miami. It did not come to fruition. TC, are you okay? It's all about cat like reflexes, and I use mine to get out of the way of the ball. So we're good. <laughs> as long as it's not a cat. Cat like going back <laughs> to spring training, right? High fly into left field with Yoshida all day to get under and makes the catch. One hit, one man left. On an all new Nesson Clubhouse, Sophia goes to Polar Park to celebrate women who work in, in and around baseball. Catch Nesson Clubhouse tomorrow at noon only on Nesson. Presented by Delta Dental of Massachusetts. Well, fans have had their seventh inning stretch. On a lovely day at Fenway, Toronto still on top 4 3. Kevin Euclid, Dave O'Brien, Tim Wakefield, and Tom Karen. Middle game of this big, big weekend series. Jimmy Garcia coming out of their bullpen. Good, too. He stranded 20 of his 21 inherited runners. And he gets the bottom third of the order. Arias has doubled and struck out after getting his first Red Sox hit yesterday. Yeah, Garcia definitely throws the kitchen sink at you. Curveball, four seam sinker, slider, and change. It's a high drive again toward that triangle. Varsho spent most of the day out there. Not a difficult play this time. Out number one. Connor Wong will be next. Connor today has hit one very deep out to that triangle, and Varsha made a nice running play on that. He's gone 0 for 2. Eleven hits for the Blue Jays. Red Sox with six. Red Sox big blow off the bat of Raphael Devers three run homer that tied the game in the fourth inning. Toronto got another one across in the sixth inning. Curve ball for strike. Sox have dropped five of their last six at a very inopportune time. They need to win badly today. Right now, three back in the wild card. Seattle has actually jumped in front of the Red Sox in the wild card race for the moment, anyway, at two and a half back. Wow, 99 right there. I know. He's usually sitting around 95, 96. Two and two. It's a 92 mile hour slider. I mean, he is feeling it right now. Chris Martin up in the bullpen. Yeah, he's had an outstanding year for the Red Sox.
Chang on deck. Got a piece of it. Ooh. Time now for a high strength steel play. It's presented by you New know, England Chevy dealers. We talked about this catch. Yeah, this was a beautiful swing on a slider. Marshall got a bad little break out the gate, but he had a lot of ground up. He made a sick catch. Like 20 steps back there. He plays a shallow center field, huh? I think that's the thing with Connor Wong is people don't realize how much power he has. And when you see it, I mean, it, the ball can jump off his back. 3 2. Looked like he went, he did. Strike three. Two down. Yu Chang 0 for 2. He has struck out and grounded out. Will hit here with the bases empty. Yeah, good fastball. Rising fastball right there. Can't hold up on that one. Oof. It's hard as a hitter too when you're not staying back on that backside and you're floating forward to try to hold up that swing. Body just takes a little too much forward. You started the day at short. He's moved over to first. That's actually made a couple of defensive changes. Duran on deck. Hard hit to third. Wrong guy though. Chapman right on target. One, two, three. The legacy of the legendary Jerry Garcia. Ticket holders who purchase this special off offer will receive a Red Sox tie-dye jersey. Get your tickets at RedSox.com slash Jerry Day. Red Sox are down here 4 3, get late eighth inning. Chris Martin to make his appearance. He'll become the fifth Red Sox pitcher today. He's been outstanding. 37 appearances to date with a 157 ERA. He's been pretty much automatic. He just pours it into the strike zone. David Schneider, two for two of the walk. And make him three for three. And as you said several innings ago, he can hit. At the time of his promotion, he led the International League in walks, and he was number six in home runs. Yeah, he just does it all. I mean, he, he knows how to go up there and have good at bats. Can yank you and drive that ball out of the yard to the left left field like he did yesterday, but then staying inside out on that pitch. It's a pure hitter. Running for him. Toronto's fallen in love with him. Kiermeyer to run for him. So they get the veteran in there. First pitch in for strike on DeYoung. Yeah, and this is probably just defensive reasons too. Merrifield can go probably to second base. Now you got three center fielders out there, Roman. Mm -hmm. One and one. Toronto with 12 hits to the Red Sox six. Blue Jay fans who have been packing Fenway. Really enjoying these first two so far anyway. This one far from over. One and two. Another big crowd 36,000 732 that is a sellout for the second consecutive game. And a lot of blue here. Bounding ball to Raphael. Raffi high throw, not a good throw, but he came down to get the bag. Chang somehow got the out safely down to second is Kiermeyer. Yeah, just kind of sidearmed it, threw it up. Thankfully, you came down on the bag oh, just good before. Play. Good play. Yeah, Raffi right here just opens up. You start opening up, you don't keep that chest going and moving towards your target. That ball can creep up and your hand can get underneath it. Fire it up over the first baseman's head. 
Well, the home run was a wonderful thing. Defensively, his head's been somewhere else lately. Very uncharacteristic of him because he's a very good defender. They get saved there by Chang. Well, they do have a man at second with one away. Wood Merrifield has gone 0 for 3 with a walk. That's a huge run out there this late in the game, especially with the back end of their bullpen. The impressive thing about Martin, too, is just the way he utilizes his pitches. He's got three different variations of that fastball where he's going to go a little left, a little right, and a four seam up. Right side, that'll advance the runner, gobbled up by Arias. Kiermaier down to third, but two down. And here comes Brandon Bell, who crushed a home run back in the third inning. You don't see a lot of pitchers that have a sinker, the four seam, and the cutter. And that's what Martin throws at you. I mean, he's got that great extension, being a big guy. Just utilize it going in different directions. So as a hitter, you're trying to pick, okay, is that the cutter, the fastball, or the sinker? So probably all comes out of the same slot too from the sky belt also at a base hit in this one so he is two for four it's a huge out here for the Red Sox now the bullpen held in the sixth inning thanks to Winkowski got the double play ball that's a rocket he's going to pull it foul though and somebody made a play Brought the glove and put it to work. Nice. That was hit with some pace, too. Wow. Save somebody down there. Two and one. Should play it like the Savannah Bananas. If somebody in the, in the, the fan catches it, you're out. Ow. That would be fun. Came off the bat at 106.8. It's impressive. Runner at third. Here's the 2 1. Off the outside. Good count here for Belt. Vladdy on deck again. He always seems to be right around the corner. Kiermaier leaning toward home. And a strike. I don't know if Bell thought he was going to throw a strike to him right there. Looked like he was time probably taken all the way. Which is odd. I don't know too many people are going to want to walk to get to Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Three and two, two out. Swung on and fouled it off. Barely made contact. With a fastball at 97. Three and two. Huge run at third base. And he's going to walk him. So Belt is aboard. They're on at first and third, and here comes Vladimir. So far today, he's been awfully quiet. He is 0 for 4, hitting into a double play with the bases loaded in the sixth inning. And Bush out to chat. It's not a bad play there. Had a base open. Now you have situation you defensively that ground ball you can go to second and go to first instead of throwing all the way across the diamond but whew, facing Vladimir Guerrero on this situation is not yeah, you, the, <laughs> the ideal thing to do but he hasn't swung the bat too well today you know fastballs have been beating him a little bit got that six four three ball in on him but like you said hey you get him four times scared that's saying something. You don't know if you're going to give him that fifth. I know. Gosh. Sitting there with 192 hard hit balls. That is number two in the majors and leads the American League. 
Going to pop that one toward Thank right you. field. Charging in on it to ball. Coming, coming. He's got it. Martin gets out of it. It remains a one run game here in the middle of the eighth. Yeah, this is what power does. 98 up to Guerrero, one of the best hitters. 98 away. Then he throws him a slider just to get him off at 92. But then it's back at it. 98 in. 98 middle, kind of up. And then 98 again. That's you because when you told me, like, does he change it up? No, he had never established the fact that he was on any of those heaters. Was able to induce a ground ball to end the inning. Yeah, keep all your bases covered with Amica Insurance. Empathy is our best policy. So they've left 11 men on base. Kiermaier into the game in center. Varsho moving over. Rayfield moving in. Mesa the pitcher. <laughs> Lefty with a 118 ERA. Duran to test him. Jared today has struck out two times in line to the pitcher. Wait, is it me or is Mesa? It just looks nice and easy, 94. It's it's fluid. Right back to him. A run halfway, underhand for the out, one gone. And the Red Sox eighth. Some guys have that just easy cheese, you know? Yeah, it looks like a heavy ball too as a hitter like you saw the ball that Duran just hit back at Mesa. But the way he throws it and just getting that sink on it just comes out and I mean he's had a lot of success this year. Yeah. With the 117 ERA but just looks like one of those pitchers that as a hitter you're like man this looks comfortable but just heavy. Massa looks at the strike Yoshida today one for three with a base hit. he was aboard when Rafi Devers crushed his home run in the fourth inning. That tied it at 3 3. Toronto got another in the sixth inning. That's the difference in the game. Mm. It's called a strike. 0 oh 2. Yeah, I'd moan and groan all day about that, but he's been consistently calling that pitch right there. Yeah, he has. Just barely off. Not a strike, but. And a base hit into left field. Number two on the day for Massa. Comes with one down. And gets the inning to Justin Turner. JT returning to the lineup after missing the last three with a heel issue is one for three. A single and a run scored. Well, that's impressive right there. <laughs> he has now recorded multiple hits in eight games played for Toronto this season. Wow. In there for strike one on Turner. Yeah, a number of the Red Sox lefty hitters really carved them up. Chases up again along with Kenley. Raffi's had a big year against them. So has Duran. The appeal and no swing. Red Sox trying to rally late. Yeah, in front of a packed house at Fenway. One gone and he'll file it away. It's funny, I thought for a second Kirk was using his fingers to call it, but he holds the pitch come in his hand down like it, the area where you're giving signs and then just puts it back on his knee. Really? Watch this. Huh. Turner has hit safely in 23 of his last 25 games, in about 340 in that span with some power. Going back to June 1, tied for the major league lead and runs batted in with 50. Bounced up there and a good stop by Kirk. A slider in the dirt. Really good block on a slider that actually hits in front of the plate. That's probably the hardest ball to block you. Have no idea where it's going to go if it hits in front of the plate. 
goes that sinker. We'll see if JT shoots it through that right side. Founder, DeYoung, and the second one, and on the first for the double play. And that will retire the side for the Red Sox in the eighth inning. Show tomorrow night at six as we hear from Heim Bloom to get the latest on the state of the Sox. Presented by Awaken 180 Weight Loss. To the ninth inning, 4 3 Toronto. They've left a lot of men on base, but they have the one run advantage. Jake's coming out of the bullpen, becomes the Red Sox sixth hurdler today. Springer has been a very, very tough one at the plate. He is three for three with a walk. Batting out of the four hole will be followed by Kirk and then Chapman here for Toronto. Sharply hit up the middle and that kicks into center field. He's got himself a four hit game. So the leadoff man is on. They've done that all day long. Kirk has an RBI double, one for four here in game two. Red Sox, the last few innings, have been able to keep them off the scoreboard when they have threatened in there for a strike. Kirk, 256 with six home runs, but actually, in the last couple of weeks, he's been among their hotter hitters, hitting over 400. Key series tonight among wild card contenders. Seattle taking on the Angels at Anaheim. Seattle's a half game in front of the Sox now for that number three wild card spot, trailing Toronto, both of them. Cubs beat Atlanta eight to six. You mentioned the Yankees. Got by Houston three to one. That was in the Bronx. And that'll miss downstairs. A little off the plate three and one. We got a big hole over here on the right side. Mm -hmm. A little worried about Jake. He's throwing that sinker away. Yeah, you want to try to induce a double play here. Throwing it away with that hole over there is not going to. Kirk looks like he's even turned that shoulder in a little bit. I know, bit. right? He does walk him. That'll put runners at first and second here for Toronto. Chapman so dangerous with the bat coming up. The Sox have been right on the edge for the last several innings of this one getting away, but the bullpen has done really good work. Now Chapman, who has a base hit, has also struck out three times. Banning 256 with 15 home runs. Issue here with Connor Wong. Pitch calm. Trying to square away his pitch calm. I was wondering this year, too, how many times. And not to say this is happening right now, but how many times catchers or pitchers have used the excuse of pitch calm to just gain a little like breathing? Like, hey, we've got to calm down here. Let's try this out. This one looks like yeah. something's wrong. But we saw one game, I think it was the Mets. There was something happening. And the catcher had to run out and then he tried to do the pitch comp thing and the umpire said no uh -huh. no no. The tech's got to get out of the tunnel. Heading off for a new one. Hey, here we go. Here we go. Jason back. Bill's angry. Yeah he is. <laughs> Delay a game. How can you tell 
<laughs> <laughs> Just a little ticked off. There's only so much you can do there. He's got reservations. Oh God. Connor now in front of him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trying to set it. First and second, nobody out here for Toronto. All right. Here we go. That was the defensive signals, I think. So base hit by Springer. Kirk taking a walk. None out for Chapman. Wailing away in the first one. Nothing in one. Toronto hit five solo home runs last night, a season high in home runs for them. And they have one today. Chapman was one of the guys who won last night in for strike going to. Like a lot pretty happy he didn't swing at that pitch. Looking for slider or something else, but that's the ball up that you don't want. Lefty trying to put him away. Good pitch here. Not out and a one two. Ball leaving up now, Chapman. And the southpaw is 2 2. And a swing and butt. Uh oh. Wong will scoop and fire and get him. The runners will advance to second and third. Now the effect of a bunt. Oof. So Chapman cut down at first, and that'll get the inning to Varsho. You know, these half swings scare the you know what out of me sometimes. It's like just hard enough to get out of the reach, but Connor Wong was able to get out, jump all over that, get it, at least get an out. You do you walk somebody here? Set up a double play? Uh I could with Kiermeyer on deck left on left. And Espinal is gonna bat in the seventh spot. I'd go out though. Fresh to the game, not easy to come in pinch hit. No, I think they're walking them. They are. They're gonna walk them. One left on left. Gonna put him on to load him up. Intentional pass to the pinch hitter. So Kiermeyer's next. I was wondering the hard thing of trying to tell a pitcher, hey, we're going to walk him, but we're going to pitch to him and see if he swings at something. For a manager to decide if that's a good call or not. I always thought if you're willing to walk him, just, just walk, walk him. him. Right. Put him on. I agree. Infield in. Once again, the game on the line here. Here, Meyer thought about it, but did not swing. And sitting 268, the veteran with five home runs. Throughout his career, he's had some big hits against the Red Sox. Big defensive plays, too. One down, one run game. And a line drive in the left field down for a base hit. That'll chase in one run. Springer will score to open up a 5 3 lead, and they are reloaded. Here Meyer again coming through. Not the first time he's done that against the Red Sox. Yeah, ball just got up. Trying to go down, trying to do some ground ball to try to get forced out at home. Yeah. Stays inside out it. Finds that hole on the left side there. It's been a couple mistakes pitching wise if balls have been left off and turned into a hit in RBI today. Here's DeYoung. Trying to bust it wide open here. 5 3 Toronto. Here in the ninth inning, reloaded. Got to be careful with this guy because he has home run ability 13 home runs. He'll pop that one, twisting into foul ground, and that'll move on out of play.
So the Red Sox down by a pair. Cora able to get in premier relievers in this one. But now Jake's is in a spot. Having a little bit of trouble right now. Uh, seems Sprayed it around. His mechanics aren't very solid right now. He's just flying open. He's already used Winkowski and Martin, for example. 2 1. And fly it into right. Duvall lines it up. Here comes Kirk. Now he's heading back. The throw is a cut. Got a runner caught between second and third. Kirk now leaves as the runner is tagged out. The Red Sox get out of the inning on a double play and a base running mistake. Espinal tagged out on the fly out by DeYoung. We'll see if that comes back to haunt. We're in the middle of the night. 5 3 Toronto. Breaks here. Base is loaded, top of nine. The young hits a ball that you think is going to be a sack fly, possibly. Kirk stops, throws offline, too. And Espinal is hung out to dry. I want to emphasize how important it is to hit the cutoff man in that situation because if it goes all the way to the catcher. Yeah, Espinal might get back. The runner, yeah, the runner would get back to second base. And we're still going. Now, meanwhile, the Red Sox say thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, it was interesting, too, because Kirk, not a great runner, but Jansen got scratched right before the game, the other catcher. So who knows? So Raffi to lead it off and a ground ball. They keep Mesa in the ball game to face him. And Raffi will be out at first base on one pitch, one down here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And here comes John Schneider, manager for Toronto. So that was the plan just to have Mesa face Raphael. Who crushed a three run homer back at the fourth inning. And another pitching change here. 5 3. Toronto with the lead with one down in the bottom of the ninth. We'll have more in a moment. So by the Woo Sox featuring three female trailblazers in baseball. Catch the Woo Sox woman in sports panel tonight at 8. Only on Nesson. By the way, the Woo Sox underway. OB Tanner Houck is on the mound. They're in the first inning in Syracuse, so a good step forward for Houck. Red Sox will monitor that very closely, of course. Thank you, TC. So defensively, changes here for Toronto. Merrifield now on left. Espinal at second. And the new pitcher is Eric Swanson. 50 appearances already this season, tied for fifth in the American League. He'll throw the split. Raffi swinging at the first pitch, rolled out to the second baseman. So one gone. And Duvall will be the batter. And Reese McGuire has come to the on deck area as a pinch hitter. Five to three, Toronto. They have 14 hits, Red Sox at seven. We are in the bottom of the ninth inning. As the Blue Jays try and win the series in these first two games, and they try and knock the Red Sox to four back in the wild card. Here's the 0 1. Yeah, Here's that split. That is it. He likes that split. Throws about 50% of the time. Only 33% of the time he's going to throw a fastball, and the other is the slider. Duvall with a double today. He's one for three. He'll sock that one to deep short. DeYoung up and gunning. He'll throw and safe. Long stretch by Vladdy, but can't get him. And the Red Sox have a base runner. Great hustle by Duvall there. Great play at short. Just came up a little short. DeYoung. Good hustle. So the big reason why he's safe on this is because the way the young had to spin, he had to go 360 to get back. If he makes that play and stays on his back foot, that's a lot closer. Oh yeah. Here's Reese McGuire hitting 266. He already has one home run today. He did. He took Whitlock deep. 
<laughs> Went out with his rehab right here earlier right. today, in the hours before the game. And Breeze helped out by offering to hit. And he took one out of the ballpark. Here's the old one. Looked like he held up. Ooh. What? Rob Drake said he went. No way. Wow. Oh, two. Oh. No way. Thank you, Dad. Barely. So two strikes on him. Duvall, the base runner. Urias on deck. Sox down two. Anytime you can get that splitter to stay Ooh. up just enough. That was almost a mistake for sure. You can get that spin to reverse. That ball will travel. Red Sox trying to make that base running mistake really sting. One by Toronto. Here's the 0-2. Pokes it foul. Toronto got the first three in the third inning. Red Sox got the next three in the fourth inning. Blue Jays with a run in the sixth, big run in the ninth, although they were trying to break away, salt the game away at that point. And Swanson's 0-2. Here's the throw to first and dive back safely by DeBall. Now on the back pick by Kirk. It's the first time I've ever seen a first baseman call timeout for the runner. Perfect pitch to back pick on, but good job by DeBall to stay there. Swanson has thrown eight pitches, seven strikes. One, two to McGuire. Great take. Ooh. That is a great take, too, because Bill Miller's been given that. <laughs> I was going to say, he's been calling that pitch all day. Just long. down. Just down. I think if that ball's up a little bit, he might call that. Good take. 2-2. Two, two. There's a line drive and a base hit right field. Duvall scampering around. He's headed for third. He will reach standing up there on the corners. Maurice McGuire, the former Toronto Blue Jay, comes off the bench with a big hit. Huge hit. Got that split and just throws the bat at it. That's a beautiful piece of hitting. A great job of base running by Duvall. Was able to read that going around second base. The grass is so thick out there, he's got a chance. Good read. So that will bring up the newest member of the Red Sox, Luis Arias, who has doubled, struck out, and flied out today. Get a chance to make some friends right now here in Boston. With one down, first and third, Red Sox trailing by two in the ninth inning. Yeah, that's where you also got to calm down. Oh, yeah. Don't let the situation overtake your game plan and your thought process of what you're trying to do against this pitcher. One out. He will look at strike one. I like the hole on the right side of the infield here. Swanson's 0 1 pitch. He fouls it off at home plate. Went back to the split. One of the things the Red Sox like the most about Arias is his power. Pull side power. What they talked about was they feel that Fenway Park is a perfect park for him to hit it. 23 home runs a couple of years ago in Milwaukee. 0 2 coming. And a base hit into left field. That'll chase in Duvall. 
ball, and this is a one run game. Arias comes through. That is three consecutive hits, first and second, and it's five to four. Hold the phone here. Here we go. Another split by Swanson. Gets enough plate, and Urias is able to drive it through the six hole. Over one run down. And Connor Wan, the batter. McGuire at second. Urias on at first. Connor today, 0 for 3. He's already been robbed of a hit on a deep fly to center field. The 1 0. -oh. Swing a high fly ball. Deep left center. Way back to the wall and leaping up to oh, make no. the catch. No. And why was no. way off the bag and rounded? The throw into second, and that wins the ball game for Toronto. They win it as he thought it wow. was going off the wall. Up a double play, and the Red Sox run themselves out of the ball game here. Wow, that is so unfortunate. Oh my, oh my! You just can't do that right there. The ball, if it hits off the wall, if you're halfway, you're going to score easily on it. Oh. You're not. You got to stay halfway on this ball. He's celebrating. He it's out. Oh, no. Ouch. Yeah, you got to stay halfway. If it hits off that wall, you're scoring tie ball game. Kiermaier with the catch and then the throw in a second to double off McGuire. Oh, my. What a crushing win oh, to lose. No. Fabulous, too, was telling. Yeah. Telling. Looked like he to was go, Urias to go. To go. To go. Yep. Wow. Goodness gracious. That's going to sting. Two hours and 46 minutes. The time of game. Reese McGuire, I don't know where you put that. Final score, five to four. Pre-game coming your way.